and then continuing every Thursday at noon. Gary and I are going to be starting this new thing called Rave TV. Um, and to tell you all a little bit about it, um, we we offer pretty much everything now that you could ever want in the AV industry in terms of news. But one thing that we've thought about when we were talking about more new things that we could come up with was we didn't really have like a, a quick wrap up TV show kind of thing. So Gary and I are going to start this and just talk about the top stories of the week before, go over some of our favorites, um, talk about some of the columns from our blog squad and just kind of hit the top headlines of that week. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's the the one thing that the industry doesn't have is a live show that is regularly broadcast, right? Uh, you can see there's no sponsors on here. This is just going to be a news broadcast for you uh, that we're going to come to you every Thursday uh, at noon Eastern, as Steph yeah. said, which means that's 5 p.m. in the UK, that's 6 p.m. in the rest of Europe, um, that's also uh, 9 a.m. on the West Coast, and. And so there's an opportunity for everyone to kind of join in. And we're going to do this live every single week. We're coming to you live literally right now. Yeah. And today's just a test between Steph and I. We're just testing this yeah. out, making sure this works. You you could be watching this on the ravepubs.com homepage. It's going to be broadcast every week on ravepubs.com on the homepage. It'll just appear there every every week at noon. When we go live, it'll appear. But it's also like going magic. to be shared. Yeah, like magic. Yeah. <laughs> and it's going to be shared on uh, on on LinkedIn as well. And we're just gonna review the big stories of the week. And we're gonna actually ask you to participate too. So we'll tell yeah. you about that next week. But uh, the big news of the day, well, first off, this is not an April Fool's joke for us here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. What's oh. the big news of the day in Chapel Hill, North Carolina? I don't wanna talk about it, it's gonna make me start crying, but uh, our favorite basketball coach ever, Roy Williams is Second. retiring. Yes, sorry, second favorite. Um, but the one that I know best is Roy Williams because he was obviously the basketball coach when I was in school. But uh, he's UNC's basketball coach, men's basketball coach, and he is uh, retiring. And I'm really sad about it. I'm actually excited about it because I love the idea of bringing in someone young and uh, someone new to the program. Uh, I know that a lot of people are upset, but I, I love change. I mean, as everyone in my company will tell you, I love change uh, because, uh, you know, I think it kind of, keeps you kind of competitive and we haven't been let's not be honest Steph 32 yeah. and 30 in the last two years that is not Carolina basketball no, and the rest of the audience that. is really the rest of our company is really upset about it we should take a yeah. look at some of the cameras we, we have cameras all around the company let's let's take a look at <laughs> the cameras and see if you know how, how people feel about it right now so let's take a look okay well there's there's our uh where is everybody there's our creative team this looks like CCTV what is uh, our <laughs> There's our development team, our strategy team. What is going on here? There's, uh, there's. Where's our team? I know. Where, where is everybody today? There's no Hello. One Can anyone room. hear me? Is anyone yeah, there? Like, what the heck is going on here? Nothing's happening. I don't know where anybody is. Uh, good gosh. Oh well. Did everyone <laughs> That's quit? That's a little bit embarrassing, huh? Nobody's here. Did I yeah, miss actually, it? Did everyone is... quit? I know this is COVID-19, right? I mean, no one here in the <laughs> office. Steph and I came into the office to make sure we were able to do this live broadcast. I'm in the studio. Steph's in, in our uh, creative off one of our creative offices. Yep. Um, and uh, But th there has been some news. Uh, you know, by, before we talk about this week's news, Steph, I want to ask you, because this is, this is related to our industry, uh, because it uses a tremendous amount of tech. But the Rise of the Resistance ride at oh. Hollywood Studios at Disney, you wrote it last week. For the I first did. time, and Panasonic has, I think, somewhere in the range of 200 projectors on that ride. Uh, what did you think about that? I mean, if I had wrote, ridden this ride like a, maybe over a year ago, I wouldn't have been looking for like, oh, I see a hologram here. Like, who made that projector? But it was like every turn of that ride was a new AV thing to experience. So yeah. there were holograms everywhere. There were different TV screens and signage all over, even while you were in line. Like, they made, really made standing well, in immersive. the line an experience. Yeah. So every little piece is just so... 
like meticulously planned with so many different pieces of AV technology. So for any AV tweeps who have not yet gone to Disney World and luckily gotten into the queue to ride the Rise of the Resistance ride at Hollywood Studios, 10 out of 10 recommend it was worth like the hours of waiting and trying to get on that queue. Like it literally made oh. my entire day. Like I was I, tired. I just... It was like at the end of the day too. It was like one of the last things I was riding. And I was tired. I was annoyed. Everyone was complaining. Our feet were, they were like, we're wearing a mask and they're like, I'm sweaty. But like, as soon as I turned a corner in the line and just like walked into a room and it was like lines and lines of stormtroopers, I couldn't tell if they were real actors or just like statues. I was so excited again. I was like, oh, wait, this is actually going to be the most amazing thing of my life. I cannot wait to ride it. And it was amazing. So. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, th what you're talking about is halfway through the ride. So the ride is 17 minutes long. Halfway yeah. through the ride, you it opens into this room that is basically like a bay on, on the Death Star. And yeah. there's this huge projection mapping going on where you see spaceships out there flying around yep. and landing. And, uh, and it, it, might, it, you feel like you're on the Death Star. And then they, they shuttle you into this other ride. I don't want to give away too much, but I'll tell yeah. you, it's not on a track. It uses a tremendous amount of AV technology. The audio, the video is just incredibly immersive. It's a fi flight simulator, a roller coaster, and an immersive experience all in yeah. one. But, but did you happen to ride Mickey's Toontown, Run Toontown Runaway Railroad, right? Mickey's Runaway Railroad as well? Did you ride that? I did, I did not ride that one. But okay, so that has Panas does Panasonic have uh, tons projectors, of projectors there too? in there yeah. too? And, it is staggering. Maybe we'll maybe we'll actually uh, see if we can bring on the people that did that, but also show you some footage from that, some behind the scenes footage that I shot uh, when I was there. Um, but some of the big news uh, of the week. What are we, what's what's going on, Steph? What's 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 happening in the AV industry? I mean, this has kind of been a little bit of a slow news week, um, and I think part of it has to do with uh, there's a big holiday globally for those that, that celebrate Easter. Uh, yeah. you know, the kind of the weekend started kind of today uh, around the world, uh, but but there's some there's some new stuff that came out. Yeah, I let's pull up our web page, shall we? So you know, it wasn't a major week for AV, which I hate to say that because like you know every week's a major week for AV, but you know if there were a few new displays that came out. BenQ came out with uh, the smart signage displays. I don't know if you saw that, Gary. Yeah, a collaboration. They have a, mm -hmm. a line aimed at at education and a line aimed at the business segment. So you can go to our yeah. website at waypubs.com. And check it's one of the out. yeah, it's one of the first stories. Uh, if you scroll down to latest AV news, um, RTI, we had some home news this week, which was kind of surprising because yeah, it's usually like pro AV, pro AV, pro AV. But we had actually a fair amount of home AV news. Uh, RTI came out with a new line of home control products. Uh, Gary, you're a big fan of making your home as smart as possible. I I am not there yet. Uh, you know, like that's a little big brothery for me, but yeah. you, you, you're into that. You like Alexa and Siri and all oh, that stuff. I, in fact, I'll tell you, I, I know that people are going to hate this, but I, and I'm wondering how many of you have run into this. I cannot stand the Sonos app. Sonos has a great product, <laughs> but their app is terrible. If you're from Sonos, please fix your app. It is terrible. The UX on it is terrible. The GUI on it's terrible. It's a horrible experience. And I love the product so much, but I gave up. I literally gave up and decided this is too much trouble. So I, I, I literally ordered a house full of Alexa speakers, connected them together, and now I can just talk to it and tell it what I want to play. Now, am I getting the same audio fidelity? Probably not. I do have a bunch of Alexa studio speakers, the, the bigger round ones. But man, Sonos, I am not going back until you fix your app. It's just like a terrible experience. Please, please fix that app because I'd love to turn those speakers back on. Steph. I'm going to get an angry email from Sonos now. So sorry to anyone at Sonos that we have well, been I think angry. Were great. I said it was great products, but I'm yeah, wondering how many true. people agree with me on that. I, I, I think a lot of people love the product, but frustrated with the app. I, I just don't want to download another app. I don't know if that's like a millennial thing or if that's just a me thing, but I'm like, I just have enough. Like, I just want it to work with what I already have. So if I can just somehow put, like make it work with just 
not downloading an app that's only for that. If yeah. I can somehow just make it work with like Siri or whatever, then I'll do that. But I don't, I don't want another app. Yeah, I think a lot of people feel that way. I mean, the thing is, it's very hard to get someone to download an app nowadays because everything yeah. is on the web, right? I wonder yeah. how many people actually know that we have a news app. We've had a news app for five years. If you actually yeah, go to the, the Apple App Store or the Android Play Store, whatever, Google Play, whatever they're calling it now, yeah. and you search Rave News, R-A-V-E-N-E-W-S, we have an app. And what's nice about it is it sends push notifications when we have major news. So we only send that yeah. out a few times a year when companies are merging and... And there, there's going to be a story coming up early, uh, later today about Snap AV buying a distributor. They're they're expanding. That'll be on our website this afternoon. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Downloading apps is uh, is a thing, and I think you're right. I think that's a millennial thing where they're like, "Why should I bother downloading an app when I have everything available?" Now we have high bandwidth access. You can get the uh, you know responsive websites really quick. Yeah. I just click on Safari or Chrome and just do it from there. If, it, if I can't do it from there, I, it just doesn't need to be done. Honestly. <laughs> Well, are you a Safari or an, a Chrome? Which which camp are you? So, in? like, the, I don't know. This is like controversial. I am Chrome on my computer, but Safari on my phone. Okay, yeah. Well, it's kind of hard to change your phone uh, browser. I mean, it's, it's I, not as seamless. Yeah, I know people who have done it, and they're like, "Oh, I use Google Chrome on everything. I deleted the Safari app." But I'm like, that is just a lot of work. <laughs> like my my phone screen is a mess because I don't organize my apps. I don't do anything. I just it's just like a jumbled mess and I don't want to download anything new. So that's how I feel about that. Anyways, back to some more AV news. Um, Electrosonic. Gary, did you see Electrosonic appointed a new chair of the board to fast track expansion? I love like industry news pieces like that when like big names in AV get a new position or we hire some new talent in the industry. I'm all for diversifying and building up new names in the industry. Um, her name's Lori well, Cross. Yeah, and she's been around for a while, and she she's she's amazing, and she's done an, uh, you know a great job, uh, and and I think she's going to do a phenomenal job taking over the helm there. Yeah, one hundred percent. And also, one of my favorite columns we've published this week is from Tom Care, my buddy over at Almo Pro AV. He published a whole column on his best resources for becoming your best AV self. Um, what was it on E4V? Was it E4V when he was talking a little bit about resources in his talk? And a lot of people were using the networking feature during launch to respond to him and say like, hey, can you give us what these resources are? You keep referring to these. We want a list. Um, and he wrote a column for us giving like his best advice for networking and his favorite books that he's read. Um, and it's it's really done really well. I think it's one of the top stories on our site right now. So highly yeah. recommend anyone to read that if you haven't read it already. Tom's a great writer and it's it's a really good read. Yeah. And, if, and in fact, if you want to know what's hot in our on our site and what's hot as far as news in the industry, the best place to go is when you go to our site at raypubs.com, click look just look on the left side the trending now section. It always yeah. shows you the top three pieces. Those are the those are the actual stories that are the most read stories for right now at this moment in time. Um, and that is the number one story from uh, Tom Kerr, which is, you know, becoming your best AV self, uh, uh, you know, the resources article. Number two is the fact that, uh, that Legrand has a new product that is shipping. Of course, Legrand is a big player in our industry. Yeah. Legrand, Legrand. What are they? Are they Legrand or Legrand? Let's, let's talk about that. I right. don't know. I keep saying it both ways when I go live on I things in hopes that someone will correct me, but no one has. So I, I don't know. Is there, Maybe people are just scared to correct me, but it won't hurt my feelings. Tell me I'm saying something wrong. I, yeah. instead of daylight one time, I said delight. And that was the most embarrassing moment of like my entire existence. So hey, sorry. Consider to yourself daylight. lucky if that becomes your most embarrassing moment. Consider yourself lucky. That, <laughs> so, that, will, that will not be... You know, if they, I, that'd be amazing if that ends up being your, your most embarrassing moment. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll probably do something worse on air eventually. It's fine. Uh, who cares? <laughs> In and terms we have of an experiential project uh, as our third big biggest news story of the week. And that's actually a story that's been posted for a couple of weeks. Um, and it's talking about um, in-store retail uh, immersive experiences. And uh, you should check that out at Rave Pubs. 
uh, .com. Um, what about, hey, let's talk about the big news from last week. You can't, you can't go anywhere without talking about Cenex purchasing tech data. Like that Ooh, was big, big That news. was Cenex. really big news. I and mean, I just think mergers are just going to be a thing for the next couple of years. I think that just based on how COVID has affected different parts of our industry, I think that that is just going to end up with bigger companies purchasing out smaller ones. And that's just how it is right now. Um, but yep, Cenex purchased, what was it, 55% of tech data? Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember the percentage, but I mean, they, it, it created a $50 billion company, $50 yeah. some billion dollar company. And, and it's interesting because Tech Data wasn't a small company. I mean, and Cenex That's wasn't true. a small company. It was two giant companies that have come together. And they, in some of the stories, they called it a merger. But let's, you know, read it. If you read through the lines, this was definitely not a merger. Uh, Cenex took over Tech Data. Now, Tech Data, let's be honest, was not the top three or four distributors in the AV industry. They had done really well in technology but they weren't ever anyone's top three or four. So yeah. Cenex obviously is everyone's uh, you know, number one or number two when you talk about the distributors. When, you, when we've done surveys, when we've done our, our awards every year, they've always come in first or second. So, yeah. so they, they're going to actually help tech data quite a bit, I think. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, other big stories. What were some other big ones from last week? That was probably that was the columns. biggest. Yeah, yeah we did have great columns. columns. Yeah, and Absin yesterday introduced the new MR series. What's interesting about that is that MR series is actually aimed at um, it's actually aimed at the rental staging market. So I think the timing of that is interesting because the rental staging market yeah. is still not open, right? That's kind still of still not asleep. exactly popping. But but a lot of like Indianapolis 500 is going to happen. A lot of races this summer. You're mm -hmm. going to have a lot of concerts coming back this summer. Things are opening back up, so it is good timing because this is not something you buy overnight. So the MR yeah. series is new from uh, from from Absin. You can see all these stories we're talking about at RayPubs. Uh, dot com. But but I want to know when you went to Disney World last mm -hmm. week, what was your favorite thing? Like, forget, don't <sighs> categorize just the rides. What was your favorite okay. thing? What was your favorite thing you did the whole week? Um. Oh gosh, that is hard. I think it. My favorite part of going to Disney World every time is going to Epcot and just walking around the different countries because each yeah. one has such a different vibe. And you can tell that the architects and the designers really just spent a really long time creating and just trying to immerse yourself, like immerse everyone who walks through within the country. And I don't even have to go in each country. I just like walking by them and just looking around. It is literally my favorite thing I could spend all day in the countries. Um, Norway is my favorite um, because they have really good beer. <laughs> and you, also- and What you're basically saying is you drank your way around Epcot. I did. Yes, 100%. Highly recommend the White Stag uh, Black Cherry Bourbon Lemonade if you're in America. It's really good. And also the light beer in Norway. Those are my two faves. No one asked. I like, but I like the- I like the pretzels. Are those in Germany? Where are those? I think that's Germany. Those, they're in Germany. They're like the pretzels that are like as big as your head. Yes. They don't they yeah. never put enough salt on those pretzels though. But inside of Germany, they have this, they have this store that's right there when you first walk into the left. Mm -hmm. It has this caramel corn that just feed yes. that to me as I'm dying. Yeah. <laughs> so you're dying. <laughs> all right. That's, that's all I want is the caramel corn. Well, maybe some Ben and Jerry's. Yes. But that caramel corn <laughs> is amazing. They make it like right it's, in front of you and you're eating yeah. it and it's like sticky in your mouth as you're eating it. But yet the popcorn is still hard, but the caramel's melting in your mouth. It's, See, uh, my favorite thing is I go in the little bakery in Norway. Like I basically, I just spend all the time in Norway and there's a school bread, which is like a Norwegian like pastry. And it is next level. It is so good. I could eat 10 and like still eat more. That's what I want as I'm dying. The school bread. Yeah. Said? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, what about, those next what time about the new rides at, uh, have they opened up any of the new rides over at, um, at uh, Epcot yet? Because they're building like, they're building a guardians of the galaxy ride. 
Is that, was that one open? No, none of the new stuff is open. So there's still a lot of construction going on kind of all over Epcot. It was kind of ugly, to be honest, but. Um, well, Epcot's never been really pretty. Not the entrance way. It's always. <laughs> yeah. Always, it opened in 1983 and it looked mm -hmm. like you're walking into 1976. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I wasn't alive then. I wouldn't but, know. But, but around. I would for it. Okay. You're making me feel old again. <laughs> around the water, of course, that's always looked cool. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's cool. That's what we were yeah. referencing. Now, did you I walk also, from Epcot to Hollywood Studios? Did you know you can walk from Epcot to Hollywood Studios? It's only I like did. A walk. I, yeah. I didn't do that, but I, I realized you could. I actually walked around. I kind of like walked around a few resorts this time, which I hadn't done yeah. previously. And the Boardwalk Resort is so cool. And you can walk yeah. to Epcot after, which I didn't yeah. realize. It's like a five-minute yeah. walk. And the, the thing that upset me last time I was there is the ESPN zone is still closed. And I was there during yeah, it is. Uh, a basketball tournament or something. I couldn't watch it. Um, but, I, you know, I think things are starting to open and back up in a bigger way. Um, and excited about that. You know, going back to new products, uh, you know, there's, there's a, you go to our website, by the way, ravepubs.com. You actually see this on a weekly basis on our website. You'll see that video window pop up. Um, if you're there right now, you can see that we're playing live on, on the site. But, of course, yeah. we'll also push it out to LinkedIn. But, um, but there, there's a, there's a, we do not just product stories, but we also talk about sort of industry trends. And we have a great set of bloggers that do a great job keeping us posted on what they do in the industry. We have some that are integrators, some that are manufacturers, some that are design consultants, some of them that are end users. Scott Tyner always does a great oh. job with higher education pieces. Yeah. Uh, Mark Coxon does a great job with our integrator pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and there is an AV glossary that's been posted on our website a link to that. There's a story about it from Tony Soprando. Um, he, uh, uh, by the way, I love that name. I mean, how can you not like that name if you watch the Sopranos? Now, he has nothing to do with Sopranos, but I like the name Tony <laughs> Soprano. In fact, the other night, I, this is going to sound really weird, but the other night, it's like 10 o'clock at night, and I'm watching this documentary on Netflix called The Last Blockbuster, and it's in Bend, Oregon. The Last Block. There's still one Blockbuster store. For those of you who want... I, I almost have to stop and say, look, I know you think I'm crazy for watching this documentary. You're going to fall in love with it, especially if you're my age and you grew up in the in, in an industry where video kind of kind of evolved right before our very eyes. Like when I was a kid, my dad was shooting, you know, whole movies on film, little, you know, eight millimeter film cameras. And then then VHS came out. Right. And there's something about opening a VHS box and having that clicking noise and the smell and then the be kind, <laughs> rewind, please rewind thing mm -hmm. on, the, on the videos from Blockbuster. But there's this one Blockbuster in Bend, Oregon. I text Tony at like 10 o'clock at night. Hey, do you know these people? Did you, did you go to this Blockbuster? And he goes, we're a little small town. Everybody knows everybody. But he actually published a link to a glossary um, and he actually posted uh, some of the terms from his glossary that he created, AV glossary inside of the inside of the blog so if you go to raypubs.com go to the right side of our website under the blog squad stuff and you'll see the audiovisual glossary um which he wrote with uh with his partner uh or with his with his um colleague uh kate couch and it's great because it's he breaks it into to video um you know audio and and uh, you know all the terms that kind of we all throw around like everybody knows right i mean yeah i think you you know, you're going through and learning, you're getting your CTS and learning all about that. I think you might benefit yeah. from this because there's even lighting terms in there, stuff I didn't know, acoustic terms. I don't yeah. know about acoustics. What do you think, Steph? Have you taken yeah. a look at it? Yeah, I've taken a look at it. It's really good. Highly recommend. Um, and, oh, people, Madeline says that people are interacting on LinkedIn. Thank you, people. We appreciate hey, it. Keep thank doing you. it. Thank Keep you. commenting. We love you. We love you. Thank you. Uh, if you want to ask us a question live, we'll answer your questions. We, you know, we're going to do this live on raypubs.com, but we're kind of doing the sneak peek look on LinkedIn at the same time. We're yeah. just kind of talking about a little bit of nothing. We want you to learn a little bit more about our personalities, learn how we work together, but also kind of talk about the industry, not just about the products, but the people in the industry as well. And we just, yeah. we were just talking about Tony Sprando. But I love yeah. that. Did I already say I love that name? Yes. Wait, I want to talk about House of Worship really quick because I don't feel like that corner of the market gets enough love. And we have had two really good House of Worship columns posted in the past week. Uh, so one is from Andres Camano. He's one of our new recent writers who he wrote about like churches returning to live events after 
one, having to get used to going virtual really, really quickly at the beginning yeah. of COVID they because did. most of them did a great job. I'm, yeah. I have a friend that I have a friend that from high school that's a minister and he was start like within two weeks of everything shut down. He was broadcasting on Facebook Live. I was shocked yeah. because he was not a technical guy that I remember. But right. I think that they did, that segment of the market did a good job jumping They did a line. great job ahead. transitioning pretty smoothly. Obviously, there are going to be some bumps here and there when you have to just like transition like that. But most of the churches that I have read about or looked at or read stories about have been really, really interesting and uh, done a good job. So he writes about how churches had to shift really quickly to being virtual and mm -hmm. what it's going to look like as they kind of have to start transitioning back to in person. Is it going to be kind of like a hybrid situation like we're looking at for the workplace? Is it going to just have to be a snap and go back to in person immediately? So that's a really interesting column. And then the other one was actually written by one of my best friends who used to work here, Jacob Blunt. Um, I have been begging him Ooh. forever. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love Jacob. You know, you know how yeah. we had this like Jacob fest when he left. He was he yeah, was we did. Friend. Everybody yeah. loves him. He's one of my best friends in the entire world. Um, he, I got him to write for me. I've been begging him for months because he works for a like event kind of thing that happens regionally yeah. in North Carolina every year. It's a house of worship event called uh, pilgrimage and they had to transition to doing it a completely virtually. So I have begged him to write about his experience helping plan that because he's on the board. He's done a lot of work for it. And I was like, just please write about that. That like our readers would definitely get something out of yeah, that. So, so if you're in that market, you should check it out. Pilgrimage is this live event that he's been in charge of production for for a few years. He yeah. interestingly enough also handles a lot of the production duties at our at the Carolina football games. Yeah. And all of a sudden we're a football school. We went 32 and 30 the last two years in basketball. <laughs> yep. And we ended up finishing in the top 12 in the country this year in football. Yeah. We didn't win the Orange Bowl, but we went to the Orange Bowl. That was important. Right. We have not important. been to a major bowl in over 40 years. Uh, so yeah. we, are, we are becoming a football school. Right now we're a baseball school and a field hockey school. Our field hockey team won the national championship. Our women, women's soccer team is on the way to win the national championship. Yeah. Our lacrosse team is undefeated. Women's and men's about to win a national championship. Ted, Ted uh, Rabinovit, uh, Romanowitz, who, by the way, headed up the launch of the micro tiles for Christy, has joined us and said hello on LinkedIn. Hey, Ted, how's it going? Um, got a couple of comments on here. Amy Phipps from Aver. You know, you know, you know, Aver, you know those people. We're using yeah. some Aver cameras right here, right here. They followed uh, me on Twitter the other day. I feel like a oh, real you're person. Famous. You're famous, Steph. You're famous. I know. She says she hates apps. So so I, I go right now and see if Aver has an app so we can okay. download it because okay, she says she hates that. So if they have an app, we got to hate their app too. <laughs> just kidding okay. with you, Amy. Mark Cox. Don't unfollow me, Aver. He didn't mean it. We, I know, we, were just, we were just talking about you, Mark. How's it going? Um, uh, my home learning is, you know what? I think all of us are challenged on, uh, you know, we're, I, I'm tired of being home. That's why I come here to the studio. Yeah. I'm tired of being home. I'm ready Me too. to be out and doing some. Uh-oh, Madeline has found an, uh, an Aver app. Uh-oh, we, uh, we may have to come back to Amy on that. Um, let's see, I'm, I'm going through our comments on LinkedIn, Steph. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, hybrid is the word of the, hey, what word of the year? This is a Todd. Eddie. Oh God, there's Todd so Todd many. Like, of what them. is the word of the year? Todd, hybrid. I'm, let's let's you and I decide we're not going to use that word on this broadcast. Okay. What do we do? Right. Are we going to censor it? Well, like, you know how in Harry Potter they had the he who should not be named to name Voldemort. Yeah. Yeah. What are we going to call hybrid? We're going to that thing that everyone talks about in UCC. How's that? Okay. Is that be our so, new word. Fine, we're not going to say high flex either then. I love that word though. <laughs> no one says that word enough. <laughs> Madeline's literally laughing. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear the new normal. I'm tired of that. Like, there's not, there was never a normal. So, how are we talking about the new normal? There wasn't an old normal. Well, I, I, yeah, I was going to say, what is that considered? Like, because it's when subjective. anything changes, it's, new, it's now normal, right? Yeah, it's a normal. Hey, normal is streaming. Yeah. But before before it was watching TV. Yeah. But we don't call it new normal streaming TV. We don't call no, it new don't. normal TV. We just say it's streaming, right? Yeah. So, so maybe that term shouldn't exist. No, it shouldn't. So yeah, we're not going to say that, that anymore either. Yeah. 
Okay, I, I'll, I'll I'll do that. I'll say we're not do say that anymore. Thank we, you. We're getting some good good uh, people <laughs> on LinkedIn kind of interacting with us. Good. I'm very happy that people are watching. What, what this. do you want to know about me or Steph? Like they oh. ask ask that question. Steph, by the way, just to give you a little background, Steph graduated. Oh, she was in my class at UNC like ten years ago. Graduated <laughs> with an undergraduate degree in in, in uh, journalism, but then didn't stop there. Went to Columbia and got her master's. So that's like the top, if you Google top journalism school in the United States, Columbia comes up and almost every single search is considered the number one journalism school. She, she has her yeah. master's from Columbia. So she's an actual journalist. I compare that to you know a lot of people that write in her industry. That's pretty amazing <laughs> that we actually have her here and she's doing a phenomenal job. She's getting her CTS and she's on the plight of getting the CTS. She's on yeah. episode eight or nine of study with Steph and yep. all, to find that, all you have to do is Google or go on our website and do a search study with Steph because that's a great, that's an easy SEO. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And it's, I've, it's actually been going really well. Um, I was kind of worried that when I was interviewing all these experts and I come in knowing absolutely nothing. So I'm very fresh. I am like the ultimate like brain to work with because I have no previous knowledge of the AV industry. I am not an integrator. I will never claim to be an integrator. So please don't ask me to pick a projector for you. I can rattle off some specifications at best, but I, I'm not going to tell you what to put in your conference room. Um, but well, I, I was like kind that. of... I like it. Go ahead, Steph. Go, go. I was kind of expecting people to be like kind of rude to me, maybe, or like condescending. Um, but so far, no one has been that way. Ever. Everyone that I've interviewed has been so nice and wonderful. So what? Nathan Haynes just said, this is a quote. Nathan Haynes says, Steph, quote, Steph is the best, quote. Uh, I love him. He's one of our writers and he's uh, he's just wonderful. He's a really good writer. And yeah, all of our writers actually are really nice to me too. So basically, if you're nice to me, I'll be your best friend. Hey, so, can, can you ask a question for me? Yeah. When you put a quote at the end of a sentence, why the hell do we have to put the quotation marks on the outside of the period? Why because can't it be on the inside of the period? Because that's AP style. But why is it AP style? Like, why did they decide to do that? Who's the I don't know. That decided that? Who are those the people? editors? The ed I don't know what their the names are. They're just like the editors the of the, the AP style handbook. <laughs> they decided that, and I am just their loyal servant. They decided. And you love the Oxford comma. I hate the Oxford comma. I hate the Oxford comma. It can We're literally not to use that on our website. No. Well, I mean, there are certain and... cases like you. There, like within AP style, there's like never. There's like a never. You never say never because there are some cases. Yeah. Where like you need to use an Oxford comma or else it just like doesn't make sense. But most of the time, if it's like a list, then we don't use it because you don't need it. It just takes up space. It's stupid. Yeah. Did you see that Clear yeah. One added voice lift to the BMA 360? Now that's their ceiling tile microphone. That's been a that's been a hot topic on our website for two mm -hmm. years because you know, Clear One and, and Shore, I think and it sure. is the mm -hmm. battle lawsuit going on between it. But they just added voice lift to the to the to their the, to the BMA 360, which is their mic array, their ceiling tile mic array, and and I, that's a good timing, and I'll tell you why. Because prior to COVID, putting one of those in a classroom or a meeting room, you were able to get audio and pick up from everywhere. But now we have this issue of having these like um, the ability, the, the need to mic the most important speaker, and in many times the teacher, for example, um, but make sure that you're able to hear the audio when the, when the students are, are asking questions as well. And that's become hard to do with just, just quote unquote, a, I don't know if it's right. You're supposed to say quote unquote, a ceiling mic array, uh, but adding voice lift means that you can, you know, you can, you can make sure that the person, you know, wearing the voice lift microphone or wherever the zone is that is having this voice lift pickup is going to amplify the person talking. So that's, yeah that a lot of people have been asking for. Um, so I think that was a good move by them. I, I yeah. don't does that mean that sure we'll do it too. Probably so. Oh gosh. And then we'll have to write about it. So it'll, if it happens, you'll know. Um, yeah, actually, no, other... we love, we love both those companies and sure. It's, yeah. I, you know, I, I hate to see two companies fight it out like this. Uh, this has been a hot topic in the industry. We get lots of comments every time we write the story and it is equal, literally equal split between clear one fans and shore fans the clear one fans are saying hey they should protect 
their patents, good for them. And the Shore fans are like, this is ridiculous that this has kept on going for this long. So yeah. it's literally split down the middle in our industry right now from, from the comments that we get on the articles themselves. We don't we don't have a favorite. We love all A V companies equally here at Rave Pubs. We do. And we use a lot of the products that, that people uh, that we talk about here in the yeah. in the organization. We we just ordered a bunch of new PTZ cameras to put around the office so that we can do these on the fly broadcasts like the Rave TV one that you're watching now, which yeah. by the way, is gonna be every Thursday at noon. It's gonna be at noon. Eastern, noon Eastern. It's gonna be me and Steph just talking about just stuff. And we want to know yes, what you want to talk about. We don't have to have a subject necessarily. We definitely are going to talk about what's on our website. Yeah. Important news on our website, but we're just but as you can see, Gary and I can just talk forever and about nothing about Disney world and have a good old time. So I, well, that, that's a common topic. Uh, the, the Roy Williams thing was a tough way to start out. Cause we disagree on that. I know that you think he's Carolina's best basketball coach, but there is this guy by the name of Dean Smith, who you could argue sort of invented college basketball along with yeah. John Wood in the way that it is today. And, uh, and uh, you know, I, by the way, is this going to be on Wednesdays or Thursday? Is this gonna Thursdays? Be Wednesdays? No, Wednesdays. It's Wednesdays. Oh my gosh. We've been saying this wrong the whole time. This is Wednesdays. I keep forgetting what day we are in. We are in Thursday doing this little test broadcast, but it's going to be every Wednesday at noon. <laughs> Wednesday. Noon. Can you believe we both had this wrong? We better do we, our- do we know what our show is? I know. What the heck? I, Who came up with this idea? To be honest, I will. I just show up when everyone tells me to. Like last night, Madeline was like, "Go to work tomorrow. You you need to be on air." And I said, "Okay." So, well, to be honest, I just show up when people tell me to come here. So. I, I say we bring Madeline on to, to wave to everyone. What do you think? Oh, Don't she's going to get Madeline. so mad at you for that. She's going to want to kill you. <laughs> she's our production coordinator on this, and she's doing a phenomenal job. But uh, yes. you are watching Rave TV. Steph, I'll let you take it out from here. Okay. So once again, we are going to be broadcasting every Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Um, so join us whenever that is in your time zone. Uh, we will be talking like this very casually just to each other about the top news stories, trends in our industry, favorite blogs of that week. Um, and we hope you'll join. We hope you'll comment. We hope that you will give us more things to talk about and your feedback. And if you want to see the old broadcast, all you have to do is come back to our website at raypubs.com. Click on the Rave TV tab, which will yep. appear sometime over the next few days because this is our first broadcast. And uh, we're taking the day off tomorrow. The company is taking the day off, for our, obviously, for the holiday. So don't expect it to be up there by tomorrow. But, Steph, it's Wednesday. Oh, my God. It's Wednesday. We said Thursday the whole time. And everybody's yep. – I just now looked at my phone, and everyone in the company is like, it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Stop saying Thursday. Stop saying yep. Thursday. Yep. Kelsey's going to really be mad at us for that one. So sorry to Kelsey. Sorry to Emily and everyone in the social team. Love you. That's, yeah, that's, they're probably going nuts. They, yeah. I, you know, I cannot that's believe hard. we did that. But, you know, we, it's, it's just, we have had so much to think about the last few days, yeah. and mostly Disney stuff. But uh, by the way, what's your favorite Disney, Disney movie? My favorite Disney movie? Um Ooh, I know what you're I, say. No, you don't. It's Tangled. Wait, wait. Ta- oh, I didn't expect that. I kind of expected you to say Toy Story or something like that. No, Tangled general. is my favorite Disney movie. It has the best music, best visual effects, best everything, and I will not, not be frozen? taking. No. Did you ride the Frozen ride at at uh, Epcot? Yes, I rode it twice actually because. This is like a long story, but my friend was on one of the little scoot scoots because her feet yeah. were tired, so she rented yeah. one. And we got off the ride, and someone had stolen her scooter. <laughs> and so Disney had to like put out like a code, like, "Hey, we got a road stolen scooter." Yeah, we got a stolen scooter. So like they were like looking for the like plate number on it, and so, so that they could stop the person who stole it. So uh, they let us ride the ride twice. Is by the way, it's scoot scoot AP style. Yeah. Okay, just want to double check that. Scoot. scoot. I won't. Okay. I won't be taking questions. Thank you. Is that is that spelled with one O or two O's? Um, two O's hyphenated. Scoot. scoot. Okay. Thanks. Good, good. Good. Okay, just want to make sure. 
<laughs> All right. If you want to get notifications on this and can't remember it like us when this is going to happen, go to our website and you'll see the little pop up, sign up for our newsletters, fill that out if you haven't already done that. But just make sure you yep. bookmark this for every Wednesday, Wednesday. At Wednesday noon. at noon Wednesday. Eastern. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. This has been the first episode of Rave TV and we will catch you next time. Bye. It's the weekly show about pro AV with the hottest news in the AV industry. It's Rave TV. Give it up for Stephen Gary. Stephen Gary. It's the weekly show about pro AV with the hottest news in the AV industry. It's Rave TV. Give it up for Stephen Gary. Stephen Gary. It's the weekly 